Okay, so we're here with episode two. Alrighty, so we have Margaret Thatcher um, and her husband. They end up going to, let me say one more time, Balmoral. I have a hard time saying it. Bal Balmoral, okay, to go pretty much and meet, you know, meet up with the queen and stuff like that. Now, it's said that I guess whenever people come to like Balmoral, like it's supposed to be like a quote unquote test, I, I guess, like to see like how well you fit in or if they'll like you or whatever the hell. I don't know. So they go. Now, when they first come there, right? Now, okay, I have a lot. I always have a lot of feelings, but I, I, I perceive this in a certain way. Okay. So when they get there, right? They get there and stuff. And now they're a little bit thrown off pretty much on like how everything is like ran there because they get there and you know, you got all of the servants and stuff and they're doing this and that and third and taking all of this. And even one of the people, like they start unpacking like the husband and stuff. And she's like, what are you doing? Like I'm his wife, I do that. First of all, I love how regardless of me being prime minister or bitch, I'm his wife. So like, don't do that, I like that. But second of all, if that, if, even if that wasn't his wife, that's extremely invasive. I don't want you unpacking my shit for me. Like I packed my bag, let me unpack it. Please let me unpack it. Cause you don't know what it is I got in there. I could have anything in there. Don't unpack my shit for me. So, yeah. So, you know, she kind of, you know, they're kind of like, her and her husband are talking like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Like, what are we supposed to wear? All this other stuff. And one of the um, servants told him, like, oh, well, there's an itinerary. So, they go to read the itinerary. The itinerary is like, you know, we're going to have drinks. You know, I think at like 6 o'clock. And dinner is like, you know, black tie event and all of this. And she's like, I don't really know what to wear. And like I said, that's where they get what to wear off the itinerary. So, they end up, um, they end up, uh, like I said, going downstairs or whatever, because I think everybody ended up coming back from wherever hell it is they was. And when they come into, when Margaret and her husband come into the living room, now mind you, they're dressed out, they're dressed up, they're decked to the nines. Everybody else, like, got regular ass clothes on. And also, sorry, I want to put this out, the, one of the servants asked Margaret, like, do you have any outdoor shoes? And she said, no. And she was like, and she just walked away and so like i said they come into the room and the whole royal family like everybody's just kind of like chilling they got regular clothes on and stuff like that and they're both looking like margaret and her husband's like oh okay and everybody else is looking at them like the fuck is like what are they doing why they got all of that on and she's like oh i thought you know it's for dinner and stuff and queen, queen elizabeth is like oh don't worry it's okay like you know we'll start dinner you know early and stuff like that um i think we'll get there because I'm, I'm gonna make my point about it at the end so they go to dinner or whatever, you know, dinner seems to be going fine for the most part, you know, they're kind of, they're having a hard time fitting in because it's like every time Margaret says something or her husband says something, somebody comes out of nowhere and tries to like cut them off. But let me tell you who is really pissing me off. Marge. And I'm just going to call her Marge. Marge, I'm going to, because, you know, it's Margaret, which is Margaret Thatcher. And then there's Margaret, which is um you know the sister you know elizabeth's sister so i'm just gonna call elizabeth's sister marge and then we're gonna call the prime minister margaret okay so marge this whole episode pretty much was fucking with margaret she was fucking with her so badly even when they was at the table i forgot what it is that they was talking about but she cut her off and like no that's not how you do it no that's not how you do it and it's like girl calm the fuck down calm down so after that, they end up going, after dinner, they go in the living room and they start playing, like, I don't know, this real game, this game or whatever the case may be. I don't know. Can y'all, if you're, if you're from, like, overseas or if you know what game that was, can you tell me what the name of that game was, game was and, like, how was it played? Because I, I didn't really, I didn't get it. Um, so anyway, so yeah. But when it gets to, you know, Margaret and her turn, you know, she's a little bit, not confused, she does it, but it's like, you could just tell it's awkward. After everything, after the game is over and the night is over, you know, everybody go to their respective little sleeping places. And Philip is pretty much saying to, like, Elizabeth, like, she's boring as fuck. Like, I don't get it. I don't like her, you know. This is how I feel about it, because now I can say it now that I'm done with that first part. This is how I feel about it. Number one, everybody operates differently. So, and I think even Queen Elizabeth said that, like, said it either there or later. What you consider fun might not be fun to somebody else. That's number one. But I think the most, and I think the main thing, more than anything, why they were acting like that is because, and this is just in my opinion, like, y'all are supposed to be the royal family, right? Meaning that from the outside looking in, it would seem like that y'all would have, you know, some type of 
you know, y'all would have like more structure. It would be more, it would be more uppity. Like you wouldn't expect to go and meet somebody like a high ranking official like that and expect it to be so laid back. Like that's not what you're expecting it to be. Like this is the queen and granted y'all are technically like on, you know, vacation or whatever, but you're still the queen. And I mean, look what the damn service is. Y'all got servants left and right doing all of this other shit for y'all. So I think it was less about you know, maybe they, I do think to a degree, she really didn't, she didn't care for the activities, but I really think it was more so about, I'm going into the situation already a little bit tense because I am meeting with the queen and her family, that's number one, but now I get here and it's nothing like I thought it was going to be, I did not expect it to be this laid back, I thought it was going to be a little bit more, you know, structured, a little bit more probably uptight to be quite honest, now that's not the royal family's fault, but I do think that somebody probably should have took a step back and kind of looked at it like from the outside. Like, again, kind of like I said about like Diana, like y'all are the royal family. Now, y'all might not. Of course, y'all are y'all. So they don't look at it like that. But from the outside, it's like, why would I come here thinking that we're all about to be in here playing games and everything so casual? That's never what we get from y'all any other time. So why would I think that's how it's going to be when I come to see y'all? So that's what I think it was more so about. I think it was just weird to be in a situation like that with like high ranking officials that's all so the next day you know uh margaret gets ready or whatever and you know she goes out to meet the queen and you know the queen queen elizabeth she loves going out on her little adventures to walk around and hike and hunt and look for the stags and all of that um she came out in this first of all costume design because i have this here because i got a shot Shout out for costume fucking design. Y'all did really. Y'all always do what needs to be done when it comes to this fucking show. But that outfit that Margaret had on, that outfit, that blue, every fucking thing. So she came out in a sickening blue ass, like, you know, suit, like, you know, top and like skirt or whatever. And everybody else is just dressed, you know, like they about to actually go hiking. And she's just like, ooh, ooh. This bothered me right here too. Um, you know, they, so... Oh, Queen Elizabeth is looking at her like, oh, okay, all right. So they get in the car, you know, and they drive. They get to wherever it is that they need to get to, you know. Thankfully, she wears she wears the same shoe size as Queen Elizabeth. So Queen Elizabeth like here, take off those heels and take these shoes. But literally, when they're like the majority of the way out there, like already walking, Queen Elizabeth is like, well, next time, you know, you should wear better shoes, and next time you shouldn't wear any scent, and next time you shouldn't wear blue because it's gonna scare the stag. And she's like. I mean, well, I could go back to the house and change. Yeah, I think that would be best. That is some queen ass shit. Because why, if the minute you seen her come outside like that, why would you have not said to her, Queen Elizabeth, um, I think maybe you should turn around and change into something different. Because we're about to be out here in the, mood, in the mud, in the woods, in the sticks, and we about to be hunting. So maybe you should go back now. Why would you get in the car with her? drive all the way there get out the car give her those shoes walk super far just to say oh maybe you should go back to the house by that point i would have been done with all the things i would have been done i would have been done i would have been done that was so like rude to me and unnecessary you could have told her that before i even got in the fucking car you see what she had on what's wrong with you like that 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 bothered me so much so um they come back right Oh, when, okay, so like I said, so she comes, so Margaret comes back to the house, um, you know, and then we see Marge come in, and I don't know who Marge was talking to, but Marge comes in, and then she turns around, and she sees, oh, that's what it was, she was getting ready to go out to go and meet, um, you know, Elizabeth and stuff like that for lunch, and she turns around, and she realizes that Margaret and her husband are, you know, in this little room, whatever, and Margaret's, like, at this desk right in, and she starts around like, you don't need to sit there. You don't sit there. You don't sit there. You need to get up. You need to get up. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. She's like, that's Queen Victoria, see? And you need to not do that. And you need to not do that. She was just talking like a brat and a bitch the whole time. And I don't know. I kind of perceived it personally. I perceived it as jealousy. I perceived it as you being jealous about the fact that um there's another woman here with power. And you're not one of them. You're upset because you don't want her to get too close to your sister. Um, I think it's a little bit of everything, but I really think it's more of a, I really think she's just jealous of the fact that there is another woman outside of her, outside of her queen, I mean, outside of her sister, that's just as powerful. Because previous to the prime minister, previous to Margaret becoming prime, prime minister, the highest ranking official woman 
is Queen Elizabeth. And then after that, I don't know who the fuck it would be. It probably would be Margaret after that. So in all reality, it's like, I mean, it's probably Queen Mother and then her. So I feel like, I just feel like Marge, excuse me, I feel like Marge was just extremely jealous, jealous of Margaret, of her standing, of the fact that she could possibly even get close to her sister. That bothered the fuck out of her, and that's why to me she kept bothering her. But I was ready to smack the fuck out of Marge. Marge, go about your day and mind your business. You're just mad because, I mean, you mad, you mad, but at the wrong person. You're mad for all the right reasons at the wrong person, if that makes sense. So yeah. So... Yeah, so then we have Charles, you know, he's on the phone still fucking talking to Camilla or whatever, still talking to her, um, you know, when, oh, how's everything going in? You know, you want me to drop everything and come to see you, but I have kids that I have to do. How did her husband feel about this? Like, I'm going to have to do my research. How did how, how did Camilla's husband feel about this? Is it Camille or Camilla? Because I want to make sure. I want to make sure. I want to make sure I'm hearing it right. Yeah, it's Camilla. Yeah, so I want to know how Camilla's husband felt about this. Like, did Camilla's husband know at the time that she was messing around with him? Like, how did she, I, I really, I'm, I'm interested in knowing, like, his role and everything. Um, you know, Camilla pretty much is encouraging him pretty much to pretty much, like, marry Diana because she's being real like everybody else is like you can't marry me and I can't marry you I have children I'm not moving away like I have a husband like you know this is not gonna work out what we're doing is all it's ever gonna be so you might as well just go ahead and marry you know Diana and go ahead but you know he's like I don't I don't know you know she's so young actually I'm sorry y'all because I'm sorry as I do this review I'm thinking about things what was the age difference oh okay okay so he was he was 32 when he married her Ooh, okay so there was a 12 year difference no no fucking wonder he was okay now this makes sense all in the world okay so he is he's 12 he was 12 years older than diana that's why he was looking at her he kept saying she's a baby she's a baby because this man was like in his 30s and she had just turned 18 but i never got time for that shit and so, um, so yeah, so they had that conversation. So then Diana ends up coming to the palace for the weekend, you know, and when she gets out, everybody's like, whoever she talked to was like, this is a big weekend for you. You know, this is the most important weekend of your life. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, girl, it is. Cause this is about to send you down the road that, um, unfortunately, I don't think you really wanted to fucking go now. And if, if you ask me, I ain't, mm, the way that it ended, not good. So anyway, so, um, they end up waking up Diana super, 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 super early. Um, I think she, I think that they went to, they went to dinner that night or they had dinner and, you know, everybody seems to like her. You could tell that she's like a really, really charming, you know, type of person. The next morning, um, the servants wake Diana up and they wake her up because, you know, Prince Philip, Prince Philip, Prince Philip wants to go out, you know, with her hunting or whatever. So, you know, he comes, you know, she goes and she meets him and, you know, she, he's like, you know, if, you know, you won't be around. I just kind of want to learn more about you, the type of person that you are. You know, she tells him, you know, I'm a landlady. I live in the flat with three other girls, um, you know, and I do a lot of cleaning. You know, my sister, she pays me pretty much nothing to clean, but I do it, you know. And so he's like, OK, OK. So you could tell he's kind of warming up to her. Now, the whole episode, they're, like, focusing on, like, this stag or whatever. And I don't know. Do y'all think Do y'all think the stag represents Diana? Because I do, to a degree. You can see, like, they show flashes of the stag throughout, like, the episode. Um, You know, like, first, the like, the stag's doing fine. Then it was, like, bruised a little bit. And then, you know, like I said, so they end up finding the stag. And, you know, they get low, whatever, about to shoot it. And what really won uh philip over prince philip over is the fact that you know she kind of she she calls herself a country girl and it was obvious because when he was about to shoot he was like the wind he's like which one is the wind coming from and she was like the left and he's like no nah, it's coming from the right she's like no nah, i'm telling you it's coming from the left and he ended up listening to her and he got the stag now at the end of the episode like it showed like the different places that we had seen the stag before and he's no longer there of course because he got killed i don't know i feel like that I gotta think more, look more, watch the episode again to see like how that probably represents Diana. But I, I'm I'm positive it does in some way somehow. Um, so they end up like I said getting the stag thanks to her advice. You know, 
goes home with it everybody's excited everybody so at this point you could tell everybody's kind of like approving of you know diana like she cool we like her she's really really cool um diana ends up diana and diana ends up going home okay you know she says bye to philip and everything um camilla ends up calling philip as usual and talks about her like i never understood like this is my whole thing like if i'm gonna be like your side piece or your side boo i don't want to talk about your main bitch i don't want to talk about her like i know chloe and hallie said i want to do what she does like i'll even help you pick her dress but i don't i don't want to talk about her like what y'all do is what y'all do just know that what y'all doing is not what me and you about to do but camilla to me just seemed very concerned about like well what did you think of her did you like her he's like i mean she cool or whatever she cool she cool and it pretty much gets to the point to the conversation where she's like you know just go ahead and like i said to her like i said to you before just go ahead and marry the girl because what else are we supposed to do this is not gonna work and you know you could just tell throughout the episode charles really he really 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 didn't want to marry princess diana and that's probably why that whole affair and shit like that ended up you know spanning out the way that it did because he didn't really want to be with her in the first place but what camilla was saying is true what dicky said before he died is true what his sister ended up saying to him later is true like at the time like you gotta do what you gotta do like you you, you have to have a woman and she has to like you know she 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 gotta be suitable period she gotta be suitable so um they end up coming to get prince charles he comes he charles he ends up going to meet his daddy philip in the little whatever little thingy and you know philip tells him like he was like he made it when he's talking to camilla he's like he made it painfully clear what it is that they want me to do and she's like what's that they want me to marry her like now and like i said that's when she's like well you gotta do what you gotta do marry the girl she seems like she's nice enough she says she'll she seems like she'll be a good fit for you so yeah so he's just like oh my gosh oh my gosh like this is just so freaking stupid and i don't remember exactly when but like i said him and his sister charles and princess Anne end up having a conversation you know and he said she even because like i said everybody knows about camilla so even his sister's like so what's up with you in that other situation like is y'all done or whatever like 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 what she think and he was like she thinks the same as y'all she thinks that i should marry her she's like yeah because she got common sense like the rest of us you need to just go ahead and marry the girl there's no other reason why you shouldn't and she damn near perfect and i find it interesting very interesting that in the beginning everybody seemed to be down with diana everybody seemed to be down with her but clearly as time went on y'all did not feel that way and i cannot wait to see how and why that unravels like i said i know little bits and pieces from what i'll read and articles but i really want to see how they're going to play it out because i'm trying to understand how did y'all go from she's perfect she's perfect to y'all just straight hating the girl i mean i know what happened she started leaking stuff out but i just want to understand the breakdown of the relationship between diana and the rest of the family i'm very interested in that so um margaret margaret thatcher okay she's you know doing her work and she's watching tv right i mean she's not really watching tv but she's doing her work and she overhears you just see different people coming on the, the screen like people in her cabinet and whatnot and they're all talking big shit on her like she don't know what she's doing the economy is so bad and you know she's a nice person but she has like no experience same thing they said about obama um she has no experience so how is she supposed to lead and at this point the cabinet needs to look at other decisions and she's like oh oh okay so next thing we see we see people coming into her office she got a list she got a list and she checking it twice okay she got a list you got people coming in no music I, I love the way that this that this whole like sequence of events was um shot because there's no dialogue it's just simply you see people coming in you see people leaving out her checking the list and as time goes on you see people they leave and they leave leaving mad so pretty much what she was doing because she even said i think later on maybe like right after that like it's time like it's time to like make a change from the top to bottom so pretty much from what i understand all those people that was talking big shit she fired all of them and she replaced every single last one of them and i'm like yes bitch that's how you fucking do it because we're not gonna have a somewhat dicky situation where somebody gonna try to overthrow me and try to overthrow this government absolutely not y'all not here for me guess what i am the prime minister so i can say fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you and that's what she did she said fuck you to all of them she got rid of all of them old ass fucking men and she brought in you know some newbies 
So that's ended up what happened for there. So she, um, yeah, I put, I put Margaret went on a firing spree because y'all niggas is unloyal as fuck. That's literally how I have my notes. So after she does all of that, she goes to go see the queen. And, you know, the queen is like, well, you know, pretty much in life, you are like, you know, I hear you clean in the house. So she's like, yeah, you know, you, you, you do what you got to do. And the queen pretty much is just like, well, I mean, I understand that, but, you know, it's not good to have enemies. And she gave this really, really nice quote. I can't think of what it was about, but she gave, it was a beautiful quote that pretty much was saying, like, if you don't have any enemies, you're not, you're, you're not doing something, right? Like, there's no way that you're doing everything it is that, that's right, and you have no enemies at all. That, that, like, something's not adding up there. But the best part, I love the subtle fucking shade between these two women. It was giving me life. Like, this is how it would be if women ran the government. It wouldn't be no, oh, I'm about to blow you up, or I'm about to blow you up. It would be the subtlest, but the nastiest of shade. And I can do with war of words. I can do with war of words. No hand involved, but the way that they both shaded the fuck out of each other while they were sitting there, because pretty much the queen was like, bitch, you don't, it don't seem like you, like you're doing a good job and you know what I'm, you know what you're doing. And the prime minister was kind of like girl i got this you don't really know what it is that you're doing because what like what foes have you really made what tables have you shaken none okay i was like yes okay oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i talked about that conversation already with charles man sorry that came on later um but i did put um i said he loves Kendalla, but yeah so <laughs> this i'm sorry i put about the whole conversation between charles and his sister like clearly he loves Kendalla, but and, you know, he really doesn't want to marry Princess Diana. But, you know, it just is what it is at this point. Like, he cannot be with Kimberly. That's not an option. It's just not an option. So, it's like, what am I to do here? I might as well just go ahead and print marry Princess Diana because, you know, she's clean cut. Everybody in my family like her, you know. But I did get what he was saying. He was like, she's a baby. Like, and I kept wondering. I knew he was older than her. But I didn't realize until I Googled it how much older he was. I can understand him being like, girl, like... That's a whole child. Like, I'm 30. She is 18 years old. Like, what am I doing with a kid? But gotta do what you gotta do, boo, okay? And then we pretty much end the episode with, you know, Diana. She's walking back home or whatever. And she's getting followed by paparazzi left and right. And it seems like she kind of likes it a little bit. You know, it, it seems like she's a tad bit into it. Um, Oh, I got, I started the first, like, two, three episodes, two, maybe, like, ten minutes of the third episode. Um... I am so interested in seeing how the rest of this shit's gonna play out. There better be a se I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a season five. There has to be like a season. This is probably gonna go to like season. I can see this going to season six. If they don't finish out the story of Princess Diana by the end of season four, I can definitely see it see it going up to season six because season five could be like, you know, whatever happens to Princess Diana and the fallout of that, and then season six could be like all the way up until we are to where we are now currently so i could I, I could see that but what a good first two fucking episodes i am so interested it was so hard not to like watch the shit all the way through i'm gonna try my best not to i'm gonna come back i don't know if it's every day but at least every other day i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna drop two episode reviews so y'all get a comment to me which i think i'm gonna wrap up